Um, it is now my very great pleasure to introduce the program director of Celebrate Brooklyn, puts on wonderful events uh, in Brooklyn. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Walsh. Hello, everybody. Hello. Can you hear me? Um, well, I guess as he just said, my name is Jack Walsh. I'm the director of performing arts for Brick Arts Media Brooklyn. Um, and uh, I just want to start by asking a question. Uh, how many people here know what Celebrate Brooklyn is or have been there before? Okay, all right, great. Well, um, I did want to start with um, uh, just a couple of facts and get everybody oriented. Um, uh, it's a program of Brick Arts Media Brooklyn. Uh, we're a not-for-profit organization here in Brooklyn. And um, I think I'm going to just try to start with uh, the basics. So what it is, um, and I'm actually going to, is that working? Here we go. No? No? There we go. Okay. So what it is, um, it was founded in 1979, and it's New York City's longest running summer outdoor performance festival. And uh, Brooklyn's, we like to think it's Brooklyn's foremost sum summer cultural attraction. It's about a $2 million, 10-week, 30-event festival of music, dance, spoken word, and large-scale film screenings. And we attract about 200,000 people every summer. Uh, where? It's at the Prospect Park Band Show. Um, we transform this every year into uh, what we think is br uh, New York's premier outdoor performance venue. And it's obviously uh, very easy to get to in Brooklyn's flagship park. Um, when? It's June through August, mainly Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening performances. And admission? It's free. Uh, free is good, uh, is what one of our performers said last summer. And there is a $3 suggested contribution. And uh, occasionally, we have some very special ticketed performances that raise money for those free performances. And uh, so our mission drives what we do. Uh, Celebrate Brooklyn, as I said, is a program of BRIC. And BRIC presents contemporary art, performing arts, and community media programs that reflect Brooklyn's creativity and diversity. And uh, through uh, Celebrate Brooklyn, we present world-class performances in a professional setting that is free, accessible to all people uh, and ethnicities, economic backgrounds, etc. We promote and support emerging artists through commissions and paid performance opportunities. We provide opportunities for established world-class artists to contribute to our artistic community by attracting large and enthusiastic audiences to the band shell, who, and those audiences are then introduced to lesser known uh, artists. And uh, fourth, we build ties between communities by creating an opportunity to learn about diverse cultures and art forms in a welcoming environment. That's a lot to absorb really quickly, but we really work on and um, our mission really uh, drives everything that we do. Uh, so I'm gonna just um, pivot here for a second. And um, this uh, very recently, uh, Gothamist did a, uh, an interesting thing that I thought was fun to talk about today. Um, they uh, did a, a, an article that was uh, 100 reasons why Brooklyn lives up to the hype. And I, you know, sort of click through and click through and I'm hoping and hoping that we were in there and uh, got to the, and of course they started at 100 and 99, 98 and 10, 9, 8 and I'm like, shit, we're not going to be in this. And it was number one. And I want to read to you. Um, <laughs> I want to read to you what they said because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed that all the speakers here and all the great things that are happening in Brooklyn. So uh, listen to this. They said, it's, it's really silly to rank uh, one aspect of this phenomenal borough over any other. But uh, the Celebrate Brooklyn concert series in Prospect Park might as well go into this slot because it continually presents some of the most memorable events in New York City. Uh, so we're really happy about that. And I love the way they characterized it because uh, there really is so many great things that are happening in Brooklyn. Uh, so, you know, as we, uh, and I thought a lot about um, the theme today and, 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 you know, some of what was written and given to us, and, you know, as we become, I'm going to read some of that, uh, as we become increasingly connected uh, with the Brooklyn community, um, you know, in an increasingly interconnected society, you know, people are grasping for, um, I think, more tactile ways in some ways to sort of connect, and uh, so... 
uh, you know, and, and how it is that we refine and, and define better. And so how it is that we do that with Celebrate Brooklyn, you know, in many ways it, it is about that common ethos and building community and, and it's been about building a better Brooklyn, thus the name. And so today I want to just really tell you the story. Uh, so uh, the bad old 70s, um, we started uh, this program in 1979. Um, as uh, I was just reminded, uh, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, and, and this was a spot where I actually played roller hockey as a kid, and, and it was true. You know, it, uh, those, it, it, this was a dangerous park. Uh, no one went in there at night. Uh, there really was uh, no cultural or community engagement. And uh, so Celebrate Brooklyn was, uh, was created to kind of go in there and do a few things. So... Um, you know, we had an artistic mission and a civic mission. It essentially, it boiled down to those two things. And artistically, we wanted to create a platform for Brooklyn artists. And, um, you know, on the civic side, we wanted to contribute to Brooklyn's revitalization by bringing people back into our flagship park and really celebrating our diversity. And we started uh, with what was a radical idea, which was nighttime performances. I, I have a bunch of daytime slides because they look better. Uh, but uh, it was a radical idea at the time. And I think what you see here is uh, this is a July 4th concert in 1980 with uh, Brooklyn jazz legends Max Roach, Randy Weston, and the trumpeter you see there is Hannibal Peterson. Um, so uh, through the 80s, we had rapid growth, really, in the number of performances, but it was still quite simple production values and uh, featuring a variety of professional and touring artists and community artists and aspiring artists. Um, and then um, through uh, the early 90s, and then it, the, the early 90s was sort of another economic downturn uh, that hit uh, Brooklyn and New York pretty hard. And so uh, there's a new team brought in, that was me and, and our fantastic artistic director, Rachel Chanoff. And um, really our goal was to sort of refocus uh, the festival and make it broader and deeper and better on many, many levels. This was one of our first uh, performances that we produced in 1994, a day-long um, African festival with artists from across the African continent. Uh, this is a 1995 performance of the Brooklyn band, They Might Be Giants, from right here. Um, and, uh, you know, we sort of used everything we had. We had some good assets. Uh, we had the city uh, uh, investing in a renovation of the band shell. And um, so we sort of used the dual milestones of our 20th anniversary and the renovation of the band shell to really broaden the visibility, uh, grow the programming, diversify the revenues, increase the number of stakeholders, and really grow attendance. And I included this uh, photograph because, uh, for me, it has a lot of meaning. We have a hole in the roof uh, because uh, we were doing performances while the renovation was taking place. It was, uh, it, it's another whole talk, uh, actually. It was very difficult. Um, here's a 19... Uh, uh, this is actually the, the result of some of that that I just said that we're working on. You can see it taking shape. You know, the quality of the venue increased. We introduced the sponsorship program. Uh, again, diversifying the revenues. Um, we introduced an opening night gala, which was really significant because it brought our donor base right into, uh, you know, seeing what it was that they were, they were supporting. Um, a couple of other things we did to diversify revenues and bring people closer. It's, creating this membership program, the Friends of Celebrate Brooklyn, where we, for a very, very modest um, contribution, we really create a VIP experience for those people that are, are really uh, great, uh, you know, members and donors of the festival. We, we really want every attendee to be a stakeholder, and so, you know, we came up with some cute slogans like, keep it great and give three at the gate, and, um, you know, everybody really participates, and, and it really is a stakeholder in it. Um, over time, you know, we really focused on marketing and wanting to sort of start a conversation with uh, the public and sort of keep that going. And this is an example of um, a two 2010 uh, bus shelter ad campaign. And I like to think that guy in the, uh, with the uh, knapsack is uh, really having a conversation with us uh, there and uh, Big Daddy Kane, who's, uh, who's pictured in the, in the campaign. Um, and, you know, we, we really did push out over time with a very uh, multifaceted um, campaign. It's a not-for-profit, and so resources are scaf scarce, but, um, you know, print, direct mail, uh, outdoor, street teams, on-site, web, email, social media are all the, uh, the things that we've really worked on uh, on, on uh, getting the word out. It's a, an example of a 2004 print ad campaign. 
uh, that sort of shows the diversity of the, uh, the programming. Another thing I wanted to point out um, in terms of programming, you guys probably can't see it, but in amongst all those photographs is a, is a little picture of Matis Yahoo, who performed uh, a Brooklyn um, Hasidic rapper who performed at Celebrate Brooklyn some years ago in 2004, uh, before he was really well known. Um, another example of just some, some uh, interesting marketing we've done, you know, using some of our assets. This is a great photograph of uh, The Roots performing in 2010. And uh, for me, it just screamed of, uh, of a fantastic, exciting performance. And so we used it in, uh, in all of our marketing and communications the following season to just sort of get that point across. Uh, programming, um, you know, I, I can't talk enough about this. Uh, Rachel, our artistic director, is, is really fantastic. And, um, you know, we really ramp things up by doing bolder, um, risk-taking uh, programming. And uh, this is a, a great example. Um, in 2007, we commissioned uh, Karsh Kali to write and perform a new score to the classic Bruce Lee film, Enter the Dragon. And uh, it, was, it was just fantastic mashup South Asian composer in this crazy film from the 70s. Um, so, and here's another example of sort of our music and movies programming. This is uh, 6,000 people with uh, 3D sunglasses, on, 3D glasses, uh, watching the 50s, uh, 60s sci-fi movie, um, Creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D with uh, uh, Roy Nathanson and the Jazz Passengers uh, performing their original score. That was premiered here um, and then went on to tour uh, world capitals, the uh, Sydney Opera House, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, we've created a community of artists uh, through this time uh, and what's really exciting and gratifying is that it's become a place where artists really want to play. And I, I threw this slide up, I'll try to get out of, out of the slide, there we go, um, where uh, David Byrne opened our season in an unprecedented free concert a few years ago, and, and I really feel that he got it, that this was really about community and, and about the people, and he was, uh, he was quite gracious about doing this, and, and it was just fantastic for all of us. Um, you know, but other artists over the years, uh, Ruben Blades, Brazilian Girls, Laurie Anderson, the list goes on and on, all of them have really come and performed because they, they really, um, I think, get what, what the uh, festival is all about. Um, uh, here's another example, just last summer, Suf John Stevens, an artist who uh, typically is, is known for not wanting to perform outdoors. He came out and, and really enjoyed the festival the year before and decided this is where he wanted to, uh, to try the outdoors. And he brought quite a production with him, I must say. So, you know, we, um, over those years, we really grew the festival. Uh, you know, it got bigger and better, and uh, it's, you know, it's quite fantastic in a lot of ways. We're very proud of it. And so, of late, we've really been thinking about how it is that we make it better. Um, and so, we've kind of gotten laser focused on really improving around the margins and sweating kind of the finer details. One of the things that we're really focused on as Brooklyn changes is making sure that we have really inventive programming and marketing that really truly uh, attracts and engages Brooklyn's diverse audiences. And I think this, this um, uh, set of pictures here really shows, uh, tells that story. Uh, and we've been really focused on making sure that uh, everybody really comes out and, and takes part in it. Um, we've also been working around, you know, trying to create a total experience here that's more than what's just on the stage. And so I'm happy Paul was here with us today because one of the things we did with him was we created the first large-scale bike valet program at a cultural event in New York. And we started this a few years ago. My colleague Diane, who is here, was the advocate for it. And uh, we park about 400 bikes at every concert now. And uh, we're really proud of our partnership with TA. Um, we've been uh, trying to be good environmental citizens, and uh, we have a recycling program and our green team, which is a bunch of volunteers and our audience. We're really trying to get people to participate, and uh, so, you know, it's all about sorting at the source. And so, uh, between plastic and aluminum, we, uh, we keep, uh, you know, shipping containers full of material that we keep out of the waste stream, and we're really proud of that. Um, We've also sort of moved into getting great food at a festival, which is not your typical experience. And so, uh, you know, the whole farm-to-table movement, 
that is big in Brooklyn. We've partnered with the folks at the farm on Adderley who have come up with a very inventive menu and really brought that um, sort of uh, that movement to the masses at our, at our performances. And it's quite difficult to do, but they're committed to it and we're pleased with the results and uh, it's really high quality food at what we hope is a high quality experience. And so, you know, we have continually worked on venue improvements to really make it uh, a beautiful and exciting and warm, welcoming place. This is my little sort of attempt at making it into a, you know, backyard patio uh, for that purpose. And uh, it's another, another picture of the venue. Um, and I, and I want to sort of uh, wrap up by really talking about um, our team. So, you know, it, there's a lot of people involved in this, and uh, we take a lot of pride in welcoming everybody to the venue. This is our house staff doing a yoga stretch before we open the gates and let everybody in. And uh, we spend uh, a few minutes every day really getting everybody uh, focused on the fact that we really want this to be about our community and uh, to be something that everyone feels very, very welcome at. And, and as it's grown and it's gotten bigger, it's, very, it's been very important to me that it really still has a, a real community feel to it and a community vibe. And, uh, you know, there's a, a huge team of people that work on this. Um, uh, this is, you know, just some of them. And, and it really is a, a sort of a community effort where we all come together to make it happen. Uh, I want to acknowledge also uh, BRICS Executive Director Leslie, who's here and has had a huge impact on uh, really growing and, and, and stabilizing the festival. Um, and, and it really is, has been a focus on sort of this total experience. And so, you know, I can talk and show pictures and so on, but it's kind of a much more of a, you know, it's a live experience. It's a tactile experience. We really want it to be something that people touch and feel. So um, there's a, 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 we have a little video. I'm just gonna show the last minute, which I think really sort of sums it up well. So thanks for listening and uh, thanks for having us. I'd show a video.